Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So today we are at day 37 of our complete DevOps course. And in this class, we will deep dive into Kubernetes services. That means we'll be doing practical session on Kubernetes service, where you will see uh, the aspects that we were talking about, like the load balancing service discovery, as well as how to expose your applications to outside world in Kubernetes. So everything will be practical. I'll recommend everybody to watch the video till the end because we are doing practical uh, traffic viewing using kubeshark so kubeshark is a tool uh, which will help you to understand how traffic is flowing within the kubernetes how each component of kubernetes is talking uh, like you know how one component is talking to the other component so it will be a very interesting session and uh, you will see all the capabilities using kubeshark like the uh, how service is uh, doing the load balancing within multiple pods how uh, a you know uh, service is able to discover the uh, pods and also we will see how to expose the applications to outside world as well as uh, within the Kubernetes cluster and within your organization. Perfect. So without wasting any time, I'll quickly jump onto the video. But disclaimer and very important point is watch the video till the end because even if you know the concept of services, even if you understand Kubernetes, uh, using the Kubeshark, I'm going to show you how uh, the traffic is flowing. So it is very uh, useful session. Okay, perfect. So let me stop this share and uh, go on to the uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, where is it? Perfect. So here for the purpose of demo, I already have a, a Kubernetes cluster. Let me clear this thing. Yeah. So this is the Kubernetes cluster that I have. It's a Minikube Kubernetes cluster. If you just see Minikube status, you will see that the Kubernetes cluster is already up and running. Uh, for instance, if you don't know how to create a Kubernetes cluster, uh, you can watch my previous videos where I explained how to create a Kubernetes cluster, both using Minikube and also if you want to create on AWS, if you have some uh, free coupons or the resources, then you can use COPS to create the Kubernetes cluster, which I explained in the last classes. Perfect. So I have the Minikube uh, Kubernetes cluster running and let me clear up all the resources that I currently have. Okay. So if I just do kubectl get all. So I was just using uh, the default namespace for my other activities. So let me just clear all of these things. I just have a deployment and a service. So kubectl delete uh, deploy. Let me de uh, delete this deployment that I have. And then I'll also delete the service that I have kubectl delete uh, SVC. Uh, this is the service that I have and you will not remove the default uh, service that is Kubernetes service itself. So now if I just do kubectl get all, I should see just the Kubernetes default service that is running. Perfect. So I think we are good for the demo. So for the demo, what I've done is, uh, you know, in the previous classes, we use the repository called Docker zero to hero. So I'll use the same repository. Uh, you can either use that repository or you can use your own uh, images if you have one. So this is the repository docker zero to hero. So you can also get that repository from my uh, GitHub. So you can simply go here, GitHub, um, Viramala, docker zero to hero. So this is the repository guys, where you have uh, real time practical uh, Python as well as Golang images, uh, which are basically, uh, you know, front end and back end based applications. So either you can use these things or you can uh, personally use your own ones, but, uh, if you want to use, then you can go to this GitHub repository called, uh, this is my uh, username in GitHub and docker zero to hero is the link. I'll also put the link in the description. Okay, let me go back to the screen. So here, now let's start from the uh, scratch where I'll create a deployment first. And uh, you know, a uh, deployment is something that creates your replica set, which indeed creates a pods, but these pods are only accessible within your Kubernetes cluster. So we have seen that in the last classes because those pods come up with a default cluster IP address. And if you are using the cluster IP address, then the problem is that the cluster IP is only accessible within the Kubernetes cluster. So firstly, let me, uh, you know, go to that folder examples and inside examples I have uh, Either you can go to Python application or you can go to Golang based application. So go to Python based application uh, in the demo. I'll use Python and you know, here I have the Docker file, this file, uh, let me remove this so that I can do right from the scratch and you people can understand. So here I just have a Docker file and uh, this is the code and service.yaml also we can delete. 
So you will not have these files in the repository. If you go to the repository, you will see DevOps folder, which is the application itself. And uh, you will have a Docker file and the requirements.txt. So now the thing that we will do is we will create a deployment here uh, and we will deploy this uh, application as a deployment onto the Kubernetes cluster. So this is a Docker file, guys. So it's a very uh, simple Python Django based application and the application uh, has an entry point and CMD. So you don't have to pass any arguments, commands. Uh, it will uh, self execute when you uh, run the uh, container. So for that, uh, firstly, let's build this Docker image. So uh, let me call this as uh, Docker build, right? So I'm giving a tag called uh, Python sample application demo and uh, V1. Right. This is the image name and this is the tag. So we will create the image so that we will do the things right from zero. So the image is created. Now I have the image ready here. Now the thing is we have to start with the deployment because I want to deploy this onto the Kubernetes cluster. So as I told you in the last classes, you don't have to remember any syntaxes. Just go here, search for Kubernetes uh, deployment. So you will go to a page uh, called deployments in Kubernetes and here just take the example that is available. Okay. Just copy this example onto the uh, terminal. Let me call this file as uh, deployment.yaml. Perfect. So let me paste it here. So this is the deployment. We need to edit the fields. So as I told you in the previous classes, you don't have to remember anything. You just have to know which fields have to be modified, right? So I don't want three replicas. Let me just choose uh, two replicas for the demo so that I can show you the load balancing as well with the service. So I'm just creating two replicas of my uh, pod. So name, I'll just modify the name as, uh, let me call this as sample Python app. Okay, and we have to choose the labels guys. So labels is important because uh, uh, let's say someone wants to use this deployment or you know, you want uh, a selector. So I explained the concept of labels and selectors. So this applies for every resource in Kubernetes. So every time you create a resource in Kubernetes, whether it is deployment or whether it is any kind of uh, resource, try to put some labels on top of them. Okay, so here I'll say label as uh, just again, I'll use the same label called sample Python app. Okay, replicas as two and uh, uh, selector, we can use the same thing. So this selector is required for the deployment to actually look into, uh, you know, labels and selectors concept where this is the selector which would uh, look for the labels called app sample Python application. Okay, so that's why what I'll do is inside the, uh, this is the pod template, right? So inside the pod template also, you can choose the same label. Okay, sample Python application. Now, who will be looking for this label? Service will also be looking for this label because service works on the concept of labels and selectors. So whenever I'm, I'm going to create service after this, I'll show you when we create service, we have to remember that we have to copy this label as is and we have to use this inside the selector field of the service. Only then your service will be able to find out this pod. For example, if I remove this and uh, let's say uh, it, it is conflicting information in uh, service as well as in pod, uh, then you know your service will not be able to find the pod and you will uh, see a traffic loss. So we can also try that as an example, no problem. Now uh, here you can call it as a Python app, just a, a name of the container, it does not matter. But the main thing is you have to replace with the image that we have just created, okay? So let me save this and uh, what was the image that we created? So this is the image, right? So let me open this one and put the image name here. Okay. So this is what I'm going to uh, show you guys that you don't have to remember any syntax for the deployments or services because the file will remain always the same. And on which port is the application running? My application is running on the 8000 port. Okay. So how do you know this? It's very simple. You can open the uh, Docker file and uh, you know, you will know on which port your application is running. So either it will be part of the expose statement or you can also find that as part of the uh, command. Okay, so whenever you are running the uh, uh, application, so as developers or DevOps engineers, you should know on which port your application is running. Got it. So now this is the deployment.yaml. I have uh, 
successfully updated the container port i have updated the image then i have updated some labels and selectors so this is it now you can go ahead and create the deployment kubectl apply minus f deployment.yaml so if i create this deployment so you will see that uh, you know uh, it says that the deployment is created and you can also use the kubectl get deploy what does kubectl get deploy do kubectl will talk to your kubernetes api server and it will get the information of deploy okay so here you will see that kubectl get deploy returns saying that okay i have created a deployment and there are two pods that you have requested and both of the pods are available so if you don't believe uh, kubectl you can just say kubes, uh, kubectl get pods which will show you the two pods that are created as well okay so this is how you can get the information of the pods that are running but if you want to get the ip addresses of these pods as well what you can do kubectl get pods minus o wide which will give you the information of your ip address of the pods okay so if you are keen enough uh, to, I mean, if you are keen to understand uh, what exactly is happening when you run this kubectl commands, you can simply add a verbose statement. Like, you know, instead of just saying kubectl get pods, you can say kubectl get pods minus v uh, is equals to seven, for example. Okay. So it will give you the information. What is it saying? Firstly, loaded the kube config file. Okay. After that, it is connecting to the API server. Okay, so here this is the API server and uh, it is trying to use this API call with the Kubernetes to get the list of pods. Then it says that the request headers are accepted and it got the response as 200. So it has returned you the information of the pods. As you increase the verbosity level, you will get more information about this uh, Kubernetes pods. Like you can do nine, which is the maximum verbosity level. Then you get more information about the API call, like the JSON uh, that it is passing and what is the response, what is the request. So this is only if you are uh, curious to understand how uh, kubectl is talking to the Kubernetes API server and what is happening behind the scenes when you run the kubectl get pods command. Okay, so now this is not relevant to our class today. So you can just do kubectl get pods minus o wide. Now deployment has created two pods and we all know the practical use cases of deployments, right? So what it does, it's a high level uh, wrapper and uh, you know, it rolls out a replica set and you know, replica set is a controller which makes sure that uh, the state of the pods is matching according to the deployment.yaml that we have created. So, for example, if I delete one of these pods, you already know that, okay, let me delete this kubectl uh, delete pod, then replica set will create a new pod. We have already seen this in the last classes with uh, practicals as well. So, if I again do kubectl get pods, you will see that the two pods are running. And this time, probably the IP address might change. Okay. So, if I just say, kubectl get pods minus o wide. See here, the IP addresses were 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Now the IP address has changed to 0 0.7 and 0 0.5. So this is the problem that we were discussing about Kubernetes deployments, right? So if the IP address has changed, now the user who was trying to access the application on 0 0.6, they will say that, oh, I was using 0 0.6 and I'm getting a traffic loss. But as DevOps engineer, you will say, no, no. Uh, there are two pods, Expect expectation is two pods and two pods are running, so I am not responsible. So whose problem is this? The problem is with respect to Kubernetes because Kubernetes, whenever it has created a new replica, okay, it has changed the IP address because Kubernetes does a dynamic allocation of IP address. It's not a static allocation. If it was a static allocation, so whenever a new pod comes up, every time it comes up with the same IP address. But in case of dynamic allocation, the IP address might change. So now, this is the reason why you need a service discovery mechanism. Okay. So if Kubernetes services was identifying the pods, okay, using the IP address, what happens? Then, you know, it becomes wrong, right? So what I mean to say is you will face a traffic loss because the IP address has changed. So that's why, as I explained to you in the last classes, we use a concept called labels and selectors. So using labels and selectors, what you do is you identify like Kubernetes service identifies the pods using the labels and selector concept so that every time a new pod comes up, its label will remain the same, right? Because the label is same. Label is just like a stamp or you can understand it as a tag. So every time a pod comes up, it definitely comes up with the same tag. IP address might change, but the tag or the stamp or the label is always the same. So service will say that, oh, okay, 
so uh, i noticed that a new pod came up and uh, let me check the label okay label is correct uh, this is what information the devops engineer has given me that uh, this is my selector uh, selector should match the label of the pod and a new pod is created so this pod belongs to me so i can send the traffic to this new pod as well so that is how it works and i explain this thing in the last class using uh, theory and the diagrams as well so now we will go ahead and see this behavior okay firstly uh, what happens is if you want to stop here let's say if you just want to use the deployments then what you can do is you can just say minikube ssh and uh, use one of these ip address right and uh, probably you can access them using a uh, curl command you can just say curl http uh, followed by this uh, specific ip address just use minus l because uh, the application that i have written uh, it requires a redirect so you will notice okay colon 8000 right because the application was running on the port 8000 so you will notice that there is a uh, traffic here so what what is happening here slash demo as well sorry guys so uh, the application which i have written is running on the context root called slash demo so you have to use this specific thing curl followed by the IP address colon port uh, on which the application is running and the context root of the application. Okay, so don't worry why I'm changing this information. I'm not changing anything. You can just go to this uh, Python web application. It's a Django based application. If you have knowledge on Django, you can just go here and you can see the context root of the application. If you go to the urls.py, you will see uh, here actually. Uh, yeah, if you go here to the urls.py, you will see that the context root is slash demo. Okay, so that's why I'm accessing the application on slash demo. I'm not changing anything. Don't worry. So you just have to access it on 172.17.0.5 followed by the port of the container followed by the context root that is slash demo. Now you will see that there is a traffic that you are trying to access. What does it say? Uh, learn DevOps with strong foundational knowledge and practical understand understanding. Please share the channel with your friends and colleagues. So this is a very simple uh, static application that I have written. Now, the problem you all know that, okay, uh, if you use the same IP address and try to access it, uh, let's say use this IP address, say use the same command, okay? So, curl minus L HTTP colon double slash colon 8000 slash demo. You will see that there is no traffic. We were getting only uh, you know, we were able to access the application and we were able to get the response only inside the Kubernetes cluster. This is because a pod by default will have only the cluster uh, IP addresses. That is, I mean, a pod by default will just have the cluster network attached to it. So if it is a cluster network, you have to access it using the cluster itself, right? You have to log into the cluster and access it. But this is not expected. Your customers will be definitely, if you have internal customers, internal customers can be within your organization. But if you have external customers, they will be even outside your organization. So you have to two, solve the two problems here, right? One is people within your organization, okay? For people within the organization, like I told you, you can use the Kubernetes service concept. Let's say this is your uh, Kubernetes cluster, for example. Uh, where is this? Okay, so uh, I was trying to draw here, but I hope you uh, understood that uh, if you are trying to use people within your organization, um, okay, let me try to grab something here. Yeah, probably I can write here. So let's say this is your Kubernetes cluster, okay? Or let me uh, take a external diagram itself. draw auto draw we can use this auto draw to explain okay clear this thing start over right so let's say this is your kubernetes cluster okay and this is your organization okay so this is your organization and this is your kubernetes cluster and this is your application so you can have people within your organization trying to access this application or you can might you you might also have people who are outside the organization itself right so if you are building applications for uh, your organization if they are internal applications then what you need is you have to expose this application on the kubernetes worker node ip addresses so that you know these people can directly access 
using the Kubernetes worker node IP address. If you want to use, uh, uh, I mean, if you want this application to be used by external customers, they don't even have access to your organization. So you need to create a public IP address for this application so that, you know, everybody in the world can access your applications. So these two cases can be solved even in yesterday's interview question. I explained if you want to solve this problem, one, you have to use node port mode, right? And for two, you have to use load balancer mode. So let us see both of these cases. Okay. Let us try to understand a node port mode and let us also try to understand the load balancer mode. Perfect. So if you want to learn these things in detail, uh, you can watch my previous videos where I've explained all of these things in detail. But today's video will be going to be a practical video. And I'm also going to show you the same things using Virusark. First of all, let us proceed with the creation of service. So service.yaml, let me uh, create this file here. And again, I'll not remember anything. I'll just go to the uh, Kubernetes website itself and say Kubernetes service. Okay. So if I'm doing a Kubernetes service here, uh, let, let me clear this diagram. Uh, go to annotate and clear. Perfect. So if you go to Kubernetes service, so here you will notice that just copy this, uh, I mean, go to this uh, page and here you have multiple example of the services. So the default one, like I told you, it's just serves for the cluster IP address. I don't want it. So firstly, let us uh, demonstrate the node port example. Okay. What happens in node port, your application will be ex uh, exposed on the node IP address. Okay. So in my case, the node IP address is the minikube node IP address because I'm using minikube, right? So let me just copy this one. Right, because this is an example for node port and uh, paste it here. Uh, let me delete this so that it will be clear. Okay, perfect. Now, what are the things that I have to change? Firstly, you can give any name to for your service. You can also keep it as is my service. Uh, let me change this thing to uh, Python Django app service. You can give any random name. Okay, don't worry about it. Now, the most important thing is to Keep this selector similar to the deployment or the pods that you have created, not the deployment to the pods because service will be directly looking at the pods using the selectors. If there are 100 pods, then this selector will be looking at 100 pods that have this label. Okay, it doesn't matter. Tomorrow, if you have 200 pods, 300 pods, what service says is I don't bother about the number. I'll be only looking at pods that has this label. If any pod, uh, let's say uh, uh, unexpectedly someone else has created a pod with this specific thing, then your service will forward the traffic to that pod as well, if it is in the same namespace. Okay. So that's how the service works. So service will only bother about the labels and selector. Okay. So what you need to do is you have to go back to your Kubernetes pod uh, or the deployment.yaml file inside the deployment, inside the pod template. Okay. Make sure that you are copying it from here. Okay. Sometimes for the deployments, you might have different labels and selectors. Okay. So always pick from the template section inside the templates. You have this label pick from here, go back to the service example. Oh, sorry. I did not save it. <laughs> My bad. No problem. I'll just uh, go back to the page and save it one more time. Uh, copy it one more time. So this is the service Copy it from here. copy and then delete this comment delete this comment so that it is clear now copy this uh, thing app python so always make sure that you uh, copy the right thing because if you don't copy the right ones you will uh, land into some problems with the labels and selectors and it will be difficult to debug okay so that's why I try to copy it as is now i have copied this one okay so app sample python application Perfect. I have copied. Now choose any node port that you want. Uh, I can keep as is as well. I can use uh, 30,007 port number. And one important thing is to change the target port. What is target port? Target port is basically the port on which your application is running. So my application is running on port 8000. So I'll choose this as the target port. And do I need to change anything? I don't. Uh, like I can change this one. Uh, Python. Django sample app. It can be anything. Now let me just save this. kubectl apply minus f service.yaml. Okay. So as soon as you apply this, 
the service will be created. Again, if you want to debug or understand more, then what you can do, just say kubectl get svc minus v is equals to nine. You will get the entire information, how the call is, uh, how the traffic is going within the cluster, how the kubectl get is working and you will get the, all the information. But if you just ignore for the purpose of the demo, you can just say kubectl get svc and you will get the application that is running. This is the cluster IP, don't get confused. Because you have created the service using the node port, you will see that there is a port mapping that is done. So the cluster IP colon 80 port is mapped with the node IP address 30,007. Okay, what does this mean? This means to say that either you can do Minikube SSH, copy this IP address, okay? And you know, you can also access your application using this cluster IP address of the service that is HTTP colon this IP address colon 80 slash demo. Okay. Even if you do this, you will get the traffic minus L have to pass. Okay. Even using this, you will get the traffic or what you can do is you can otherwise use the node code IP address. Now, why this is not recommended? Because you can already do this using the pod IP addresses, right? So a service or any resource that you are creating in Kubernetes, whether you are creating in node port mode, whether you are creating in load balancer mode or anything, cluster IP will definitely be there, right? So additionally, you are creating node port, uh, additionally, when you are creating service in node port mode, you will get a port mapping and that port mapping is nothing but what Kubernetes service has done for you. It says that, okay, if you don't want to access using the cluster IP address, you can use the node IP address and I have mapped the port that is on port 80 with 30,007 port that you have provided in the service.ml. So now I can simply say minikube IP uh, to get the IP address of the minikube node. If it is a EC2 instance, you can get the IP address of the EC2 instance. You already know how to get the IP address of EC, EC2 instance, right? So this is the IP address. What I can simply do is I can say curl minus L. So for other applications, you might not need this minus L, but for my application, because there is a redirect happening uh, within the application, I require this. And now HTTP colon. This is the node IP address. So this is the interesting thing, guys. Now I'm going to show you how the application is accessed from the uh, node IP address. Okay. So now I'm not logging into the Kubernetes cluster. I can also access this using the browser. I'll show you that as well. Okay. So why I can access using the browser? Because it is the same laptop. If you access from your browser, you will not get the traffic. If you want to access using from uh, other people's browser, then you have to use the load balancer IP address because it becomes external, right? It, it becomes external traffic. But if you are accessing from your laptop, the Minikube IP address, you can do that because you are already in the same laptop. You know the, uh, right? Your laptop can connect to Minikube because it is part of the, uh, what it is, end of the day, what Minikube is doing, it is just installing a virtual machine on top of your laptop. And, uh, you know, uh, because both of them are in the same network, you can access. But outside people cannot access it because you have just exposed using the node port mode. So what I'll do is colon 80. Watch this carefully. I'm not using colon 8000 because I am basically, you know, what service is doing is, this is the node IP address and this is the port. When you do it, it maps to, even if you don't use it, uh, there is no problem. Uh, sorry, uh, you have to use 30,007, right? Uh, you cannot use 80 because if you use 80, uh, service, uh, sorry, the node IP address would be looking for applications on 80. Nothing will be running. So if you have, if you do 30,007, then this is how the service will route the traffic to the ports, okay? So this is the node IP address. This is the node port followed by slash demo. Now you will see that the application is accessible. You can use the same IP address. Okay, just let me copy the same thing and you can also access from your browser. This is from the browser, right? So this is the application that is running. Now, if you take this same URL, you are watching this video, right? If you take this same URL and if you try to access this from outside, it will not work. Okay, why will it, why will it not work? Because what is the reason? you have not exposed your application to outside world. So this is how you expose your applications to other people in your organization or somebody who has access to your node IP addresses or someone who has access to your EC2 instances or your virtual machines. Now, how to access the application to outside world? Okay, so to do that, you will make a very simple change. Just go to your service called kubectl edit service. Okay, and what was the name of the service? Sorry, I don't remember. So let me do kubectl get service and uh, let me edit this service. Okay, kubectl edit svc 
and once you edit you will see uh, the type as node port mode right so in one of the places we have selected the type as node port just simply make the modification and change it to load balancer now this will not work here because we are using minikube okay if just the same thing just modify it to type load balancer and it will work for you if you are on your ec2 instance or if you are on any cloud provider because load balancer type is only uh, uh, you know supported on the cloud providers right and who does that the thing is done by your uh, sorry cloud control manager right so what you need to do is just go back here kubectl edit svc and search for node port and just modify the thing to your load balancer okay what is the mode that you will change load balancer i hope the syntax is right perfect so now if you do kubectl get svc the ip address will not be allocated the external ip will remain pending here because this is mini cube if it was aws or if it was azure or if it was GP, gcp you will get the ip address here and who is generating that ip address for you the cloud control manager of kubernetes why cloud control manager is generating because the people of aws azure and gcp have told the cloud control manager they have contributed to the cloud control manager saying that if you find a service of type load balancer then use the internal components of aws or azure and gcp and generate a ip address okay so that is why the external ip will be generated in my case it will not be generated there is a project called uh, metal lb uh, using which you can expose the applications on minikube as well you can search for the project called metal lb okay so you can expose the uh, it, it can generate you one uh, public IP address as well, but this is still a beta project, uh, you know, uh, and you don't have to try that as well, because if you know the concept, that's more than enough. You can, uh, if you have a EC2 instance, you can try it or else just understand that you will get a public IP address, something like uh, 32.48 or 100 dot something. And you can share this IP address to your customers or someone, and they can access that using the public IP address. Okay. So this is the concept of how to expose your applications okay but i told you about three concepts right uh, whenever we are talking about the service i promise you that a service can do three things one is load balancing two is service discovery and three is exposing the applications okay so third part is clear to you till now right because i showed you using node port i showed you using uh, load balancer mode how does this work and all so now let us see the second part that is service discovery okay so to understand the service discovery just make a very simple change kubectl edit svc uh, sorry again we need the service name if not we'll get uh, both the services in the edit and it will just be confusing so kubectl get service this is the uh, name of the services kubectl edit service followed by the name of the service and now what you will do to understand the concept of discovery just modify the selector okay search for uh, selector see if you are not comfortable with the kubectl edit what you can also do is just use the same service.yaml file that you have created okay but the only condition is whenever you have created this you must have used the apply command okay so either if you have used the kubectl apply command to create the service then you can just say vim and uh, edit the service and reapply the service or else you can also use the kubectl edit command okay whichever uh, is easy for you but i will recommend this one uh, always create your services using the apply so that in future you can modify it now what i'll do is i'll just come here and remove one character let us see if even if you can access your applications like this okay uh, then kubectl apply minus f service.yaml okay so now the labels and selectors are different so the labels of your pod is sample uh, application what was that so the label that you have on your uh, pod is sample python app but here on the service it is sample python ap so let us see if the ser service discovery uh, will be able to detect the pods what I'm saying is it shouldn't because what is the reason why it shouldn't uh, detect because the labels and selectors are different. So what was the curl command that I used? Uh, let me show you from the browser itself. Uh, this is the curl command, right? So let me just copy this one more time. 
and let me try from the browser. So this time you'll notice, ah, sorry, uh, I just need this one, right? I don't need curl. So this time you'll notice that the application is not accessible. Why is it not accessible? Even using the curl, you can see that you will not couldn't connect to the server. So by just changing the labels and selector, by just changing the selector, you understood that the service is not discoverable. So again, go back and modify. So you will understand the concept of how service is using the service discovery concept using the labels and selector. So now let's, let me reapply kubectl apply minus F. So just give it one minute, right? Because the kube proxy has to update the rules, uh, the IP tables and all the things have to be updated. So just give it a minute. Uh, don't get uh, pan. I mean, don't go into a situation of thinking, oh, this is not working. It will just take a minute, uh, not not even minute, sometime. So sometimes the refresh will take time. So you will notice that the service discovery is done. So now what are the two things that you have already learned? One is service discovery and one is how to expose your application. So finally, now I'll show you the load balancing as well. So you have two applications, right? kubectl get pods. Why you need load balancing? I explained like uh, if there was only one replica, if there are 100 requests, it will be difficult for one uh, replica to serve all the requests. So if you have, uh, depending upon the load of your application, you can create multiple replicas, but by default, the deployments or the pods do not have load balancing. If you create service, you will get the load balancing. This is what I explained. Now let us see that in practical. So for that, I have the cube shark as well. So what I am doing, cube shark is a very simple application. Uh, you can also install the cube shark and I recommend you to install cube shark. I'll make a full detailed video on cube shark as well. But if you want to install, the installation is very simple. Just go to uh, the cube shark documentation. Okay, so you will understand a lot about Kubernetes if you, uh, you know, if you have this cube shark, uh, because it explains you how the traffic is flowing within the cluster and all of the things. So go to the install and run page here. And this is the simple curl command. Just execute this curl command or if you are on Mac, you can just run these two commands and your cube shark is up. Then you just have to run this specific thing called cube shark tap minus A. Or you can do cube shark tap, but this will only be limiting your uh, cube shark to one single namespace. If you want to expose cube shark to all the namespaces, or if you want uh, to understand the Kubernetes uh, traffic flow for all the namespaces, just run this command called cube shark tap minus A, and you will see this page. Okay, so you can access the cube shark uh, browser on the port called double eight double nine localhost colon double eight double nine. It will automatically open in your browser. Uh, so you will get this beautiful page where you know you can do a lot of things on kubeshark so this video i'm not going to talk about the details of kubeshark i'm just using this to explain you the concept of load balancing in service but i'll do a dedicated video on kubeshark where i'll explain you how does the traffic flow and all but here i'll just spend two minutes to explain you okay now let me run this curl command five times okay so this one i'll just copy it and I'll run for five times so that you can understand. Let me run for six times and show you the load balancing. One. Uh, okay. Let me remove this so that uh, it will not print the output. Let me just remove minus L. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, what should be the expected output is the Kubernetes service has to send request uh, three times or, you know, uh, using the round robin, it has to send request to 172.17.0.7 as well as 172.17.0.5. Let us see, we made six requests. Let us see if the requests are, uh, you know, segregated amongst these two parts or not. Okay, let me go back here and let me see. So once the request went to 172.17.0.5, then, okay, let me just refresh this page called apply. Just let me apply and show you. Uh, Perfect. Let me rerun. Sorry, I had some old data. Let me do it one more time. One, two, three, uh, four, five, and six. Okay. So, sorry guys, I had some refresh information. Uh, so, because of which it was not showing. But now, what you will see here is when you apply this thing, uh, I think it is taking some time to uh, refresh and get the data. Just give a minute. Yeah, 
sorry, I had to restart uh, the Cube Shark. So I just created it before the demo, and for some time, uh, you know, the proxy was disconnected. So what I did was I went back and restarted the Cube Shark. So I'll show you how to restart these things and all uh, in the video where I uh, demonstrate about the Cube Shark. But what happened was this is a Cube Shark which is running, and if you see here error while proxying the request and context cancel. Okay, so this was the error I got and what I did was I have re-established the connection with uh, between the kubeshark and my Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so this is the command uh, in general called kubeshark proxy and what it will do is it will re-establish the connection. Uh, so I just did not want to uh, go into the details, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> because the uh, the connection was disabled, so I had to uh, explain you all of these things. Perfect. Now, but the demo that I wanted to show you here is now the cube shark is back. You will see that I have sent six requests, right? Uh, so these are the six requests that I have sent, and see what is happening. So once the request went to 172.17.0.5, and again the request went to 172.17.0.7, .7. again it went to 172.0.17.0.5. 172.17.0.7. Again, it went to 172.17.0.5. So, what is happening is Kubernetes service is doing the load balancing. Okay. So, what I did is I tried to access the application on this specific port called 192.168.64.10. And using which the request actually, this is the service and it it is once sending the request to 172.17.0.7. And another time, Again, you hit the same URL and it is sending the request to 172.17.0.5. So this is how the packet is actually uh, traveling within your Kubernetes cluster or, you know, this is the packet flow. What is happening is, uh, so if you take, this is the start of the request. I, as a user, I executed 192.168.64.10 and this is the IP address. So it went from my uh, machine. So this is my machine IP address from my machine because I'm using the browser or the curl command. So it went from my browser or the curl command. This is the source, right? So what is the source? Source is the point where you have started the execution. Okay, so from source, uh, if you look at the IF config, and if you just grab for this IP address, 192.168, 192.160. Okay, let me even search it here. So just run IF config. And if you search here, you will notice that this is my machine IP address. 192.168.64.1. Whether you are doing from curl or whether you are doing from the uh, browser, you will see that this is my source or this is my origin. So from my laptop, I have executed this specific IP address that is 192.168.64.10. What happened is from here, the request went to 172.17.0.1. This is my Minikube IP address. Okay. From here, it went to the service. So this is the packet flow guys. And if you want to understand the packet flow in detail, this is the tool called Kubeshark. And I'll explain you when we actually deal with this uh, specific Kubeshark individual video. So I'll explain you how this packet is traveling. Okay. So this is the request and this is the response. From there, it went to Minikube. What happened once it went to Minikube? Like, you know, this is the uh, URL context path. This is the host uh, IP address. And then it went to, you know, it sent this response. And from there, it sent the request to 172.17.0.7. So you can understand these things in detail. You can replay, right? When you replay, you know, you can do this uh, action one more time. Or you can also, uh, you know, capture the packet and you can debug uh, it with some external tools. So you all know about Wireshark. Probably you can capture this packet and you can execute against Wireshark as well so that you understand more details about the packet. You can use TCP dump. So these are some of the things. Uh, let's not go into the detail of this tool, but we have understood the three concepts, right? So here using Kubeshark, I explained you the concept of load balancing. Then using, uh, you know, uh, the browser and the terminal itself, I explained you the service discovery concept and also the, uh, what was the other thing? I, exp I explained you how to expose the application. So these are the three things that I wanted to cover as part of this video. I hope you enjoyed the demo and Kubeshark, I'll do a dedicated video because this is a must have tool for every DevOps engineer. This explains the traffic viewer of Kubernetes and most of your Kubernetes concepts will become clear. Here you can also do a service map where you can see, see what are the different services, how one service is talking to the other service. Then, you know, you can look into a list of pods uh, in the namespaces here and you can, uh, you know, uh, blog, sorry, access, understand the traffic uh, depending upon the TCP request, HTTP request, you can do layer four, layer seven, all of the things. So I'll explain uh, this in detail, but for now, this is the video for today. Like if you enjoyed the video, click on the like button. If you have any feedback for me, put that in the comment section. And finally, don't forget to share this video with your friends and colleagues. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.